how to use the impacts graphs in an En-ROADS workshop or game. These impacts graphs and charts, these are under the graph view here, and they are all driven by rising temperature, sea level rise, population exposed to sea level rise, uh, the probability of Arctic ice-free summer, decrease in crop yield, habitat loss, extreme deaths, or additional deaths from extreme heat. That's what these graphs are. They are mostly uh, bar charts, such as the ones uh, additional deaths from extreme heat or sea level rise graph maps, such as the ones that we get from the connection to Climate Central. We use them in three main ways. The first way is to motivate action at the, usually at the beginning of a workshop to say things could get really bad if we don't take action, we need to do better. Secondly, at the end of a workshop to show the payoff, if we do really well, how much better things could get. And third, even if we do do well, some of the need for adaptation and resilience for all the impacts that are coming no matter what. So let's go through them one by one. At the start of the workshop, what we'll do is lay out some of the baseline impacts that we're likely to see to motivate action. So here we would might show additional deaths from extreme heat and say that, wow, a 9.1% increase in Southeast Asia of deaths from extreme heat. Now, as we show something like this, a couple things to note. First, just be patient and acknowledge people's feelings about seeing terrible news like this. This is real people around the world. This can be hard. So make the space if need be to have people process what they're seeing here. Or over on the left, sea level rise uh, here in South Florida. This is really bad news for this region of the world by 2100 that we could lose that much land. So acknowledge it if it's needed. And we tend not to linger here at the start of the workshop because you want people then to get excited about preventing this in the future. Now, a couple of features as you do show these 9.1%. There are other things here, such as the level today, it's already at 2% increase in additional deaths from extreme heat. 9% uh, relative to what? Well, you go in here and read that this is relative to 1986 to 2005, go read about what it is actually saying. Also note it is 2100. Out here with sea level rise, however, you can look at any decade going back to 2050 or earlier, or if you really wanna raise the stakes, you can show the effect of storm surges. If there is a weather event, uh, what the storm surge might be, or it's called the long-term post 2200 uh, overall sea level rise that is in the way, way long term, if you really need to show that kind of long term impact. Those are some important features. Okay, at the beginning, you use that to say, we can do so much better. What shall we test now in order to do better? And when we do that, then we create a scenario in the ways that we've taught you in other videos of Imagine engaging people to think about less coal, oil, and gas, more renewables, and carbon pricing, and energy efficiency, and create a scenario that they'd really like to see, perhaps getting below two degrees. Um, here we are at 1.7. Then at the end, it can be helpful to revisit what we saw before. For example, if you had focused on additional deaths from extreme heat, then you might show that, wow, in this scenario, we're at 3.0% as opposed to 9.1. This is better. You could show it really big for many regions of the world and show that comparison. 3% is much better than 9.1%. In the same way, over here, if we look at overall flood risk map, uh, we can see what happens to that area of Miami and show what would be the impact in this area and to see how much better it would be by 2100 
in an area like Miami Beach if we saw these actions to prevent climate change. The green areas are areas that would have been at risk from flooding under the baseline that are not at risk because of all the actions that were taken that led to a lower temperature. So you can show evidence of improvement in these green areas. It's a good idea to look around the world and test the places that you might want to show so you know what to expect. Some areas don't show a lot of green. And that's the third important use, is that even though there are improvements, we know that many impacts of climate change are unavoidable. Why is that? Well, it's mostly because even under this kind of better 1.7 degree scenario, you can see that temperature rises through 2050, even if we could get down to 1.5 by the end of the century, temperature rises through 2050. If temperature is rising through 2050, the impacts in the same way are going to be increasing through 2050. For example, even though there are these areas of Miami Beach that are green, there are significant areas down here in this part, the blue areas, that even under a 1.5 degree scenario are at risk for significant flooding or being underwater because of all the momentum in the system. This motivates action for adaptation and resilience. Even as we need to prevent so much of climate change, we need communities to be ready for the impacts that are coming no matter what. So use the impacts graphs to tap into what people really care about, and in three ways, motivate action to prevent climate change, show a payoff when there is uh, improvements, there are improvements and impacts, and then third, to help people think clearly about adaptation and resilience. All right, go get them.